Hello, I'm Jade Spirit and welcome to a special edition of ECTV. Today we will be taking a look at the robotics competition at Ventura College. In our first interview, Zion Reza will interview Velma Lomax, a board member of the Ventura Unified School District. And now for our first segment, we will be looking at the experiences the students had creating their robots. Here with the story is Fernando Torres. Each year, thousands of high school robotic teams compete to become world champions in robotic technology. Today we're at Ventura College in anticipation of a regional competition for FIRST Robotics, where 42 teams will tough it out in order to climb the ranks and finish strong. So I am the Regional Director for Southern California um, for FIRST. Um, FIRST stands for, for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. Well, in 2004, my son joined a robotics team. And the first year that he was there, uh, I went to the competition and I pretty much got hooked. There, there's a lot of different ideas out there about how, how to approach the game this year. It's had a positive and a negative. The positive being my time is always spent doing robotics, so I'm always in the STEM field, so I'm always learning, learning something good. But again, I'm always there. The students had to you know, do a lot of strategizing, you know, what what, number one, they thought that they could do from, a, from, their capabil from what their build capabilities were to approach the different things, and then they had to pick some that they could be really good at. There's a lot of limitations, but I mean, other than that, it's up to our creative mind. Everything in the world is robotic. Cheering and being happy with all the other teams. I don't know, it's fun meeting new people also and going into the pits yeah. and just seeing them build their robots or like, seeing like all their like buttons they have and everything. It's, I don't know, it's fun interacting with other team members. Like China's here, yeah. that was pretty cool seeing them too. Each team has had six weeks to build their own one of a kind up to 120 pound robot to use in competition today. After a three day flurry of scoring points by maneuvering balls into designated goals, flying discs, sliding tubes on racks, and balancing robots, three teams will be left roving. They will advance to the World Championships in St. Louis, Missouri later this year. Surgeons are using robotics to operate on people. They're operating on their eyes. They're doing things that the human hand can't even do. I play like the spirit role, so we have to get everything ready and prepared to make our team happy, try to win the spirit award, try to be the loudest and encourage everyone and make every team feel special. You know, the back end of the robotics, the, there's the mechanical side, but then programming and the sensor technology is also, um, it's moving at lightning fast paces. So don't miss the family aspect of it. Yeah. I mean, we are, we're already great friends, but now it's like, since we're spending so much time together, it's more of a brotherhood, so it's just. They, they're not just a team to me, they've turned into like my family. Um, by using robotics. Getting these students involved in that as a sport where it's fun and it's competitive and all that thing, all that kind of thing is, is really important. It'll be almost all my time in robotics because I mean this is not the only robotics team I'm a part of so this I, robotics itself like FRC fueled my passion to keep going and I ended up just consuming my life. So. We want them to reach out into their community and into their into the corporations that have engineers um, so that they can help get help and learn more. I was interested, I was always interested in technology and um, mechanics, so I was full. Most people will tell you that if you walk around and look in these pits, you're seeing college level engineering um, that these students are doing. And it's because they're getting help from professionals. They're starting to where the pipeline, they come straight to us and they continue and they find uh, careers. I mean, like I said, they, we've been sought out by colleges so that we can continue the path that we started. As the competition fires up, the teams are feeling the heat. Beads of sweat are wiped away by the competitors as they maneuver their robots ever so gently, defending posts, knocking over obstacles, and swiftly paving the path to victory. 
Audience members crowd the bleachers, cheering and waving colorful signs, all while playing a key role in the energy of the competition. How did you get involved with robotics? A student five years ago, about six years ago now, came to me at Ventura High School at lunch and said, could we start a computer class at lunch? And I said, sure. And then after a few weeks, he said, oh, my cousin's involved with this robotics thing down in San Diego. Could we do a robotics? And I said, sure, what is it? <laughs> Little did I know that it's so, it just sucks you right in. Why is this robotics program important to you personally? They really, truly become a team. And they understand how corporate America works, that everything has to work together, which is amazing. This is something everyone can do and they feel like they have a home. So what impact has robotics had on your academic life? What I've seen is that you have kids that are maybe credit deficient, working along AP honor students, working along kids that might have Asperger's or whatever, but when they come in the room, they're all the same. And they, they perform amazingly. What are some obstacles that come with competing in a robotics competition? I would have to say the biggest obstacle is financial because it's not cheap. Um, your registration fee for your first re regional is $5,000. If you do a second regional, it's $4,000. Then you have your uniforms, you have the travel, you have everything that goes along with that. So what happens is, you know, with all the laws, we can't require kids to pay fees. So we have to do a lot of fundraising. What are the rules of the competition? Okay, this is the final stage. Well, not the final, but here's what happens. The very first full weekend of January every year, this is a worldwide organization. As you can see, we have people here from China. Um, they give us the objective of the game. This year's game is very exciting. Last year's game was a little bit boring. The year before was exciting. Uh, so they give you the objective of the game and you have six weeks and two days to build your robot. Sometimes you can do it in six weeks and two days and sometimes, most times, you cannot. But at the end of that time, you have to bag it and tag it with a serialized um, zip tie, and you have to log it in, put the date, sign a declaration that you're done. You can continue to work on parts that go on the robot, especially if you've built a backup robot, which we did. But when you come to competition, you can only bring 25 pounds of things to add to your robot. And they weigh them, there's a scale in there. And so it's a, it, the theory behind that is Students have to learn about deadlines. They have to learn about objectives. They have to be a project manager. They have to make sure everything happens when it's supposed to happen. And they can make a few adjustments when they do their, do their competing. The competition, what we're trying to do today, all these teams are, they're trying to advance to world championships in St. Louis at the end of April. Why is it so important for youth, especially, to get involved with robotics? I've seen kids' grades raise this year. We have raised our GPA so much in our organization because in our class because kids stay after school and tutor each other and then they do robotics. And our class meets from 5.30 to 9 twice a week. What is your favorite part about robotics? I think that the interesting thing, thing about robotics is that I can sit here and talk for a hundred years at the top of my lungs to tell you how fantastic it is, but until you come and see it, you have no clue because I can't describe it. I can't describe the energy in the room. We have our, our practice shirt say on the back, robotics, a varsity sport for the mind, because that's a phrase that um, first has coined. And it is. When you go in that pits, you can feel the energy of the kids trying to get their robots working and the stress and what's going on. And you can feel the energy during the competition and how excited they are to cheer on their team. And when, they, when we don't make it to world championships, it's okay, because they've learned something. And in my team, I command, not demand, that we learn something, but above all else, we have fun. What has this entire experience, building, competing, and operating, been like for you? It just sucks you right in. It's so exciting, and the kids do so well, and they get so engaged, and they're learning so much that uh, is, we started out with about eight kids and the end of the first year we had 34. Now we have 70 kids involved in this one program. We've started another team in Camarillo and they started with about 10 kids and now they're up to about 34 kids. We are an all-inclusive club or class. Our class is actually applied arts electives or electives and we're also A to G approved elective. 
So it's, it'll fit in anyone's schedule, whether AP Honors students or just a normal student or whatever. Not that not being AP Honors is not normal, but the interesting thing about FIRST is it's not just about the robot, it's also about corporate America. So we have a financial director, a student financial director. We have a person that's in charge of fundraising. We have a person that's in charge of our website and our social media. And they actually, the kids have come up with some great fundraising ideas and we've gone out and made presentations and gotten a lot of new sponsors this year. But a team starting out, it's a big obstacle. What role do you play specifically on your team? We, in our, in our team, in our class, because it is a class first, then we have the team within the class. We have mechanic, we have design, mm -hmm. right? and I have 12 mentors from the community that all have expertise in these areas that come and help with the kids. There's no way I could teach 70 kids by myself. And they come in, I have electrical engineers, I have people with doctorates, I have people that, are, I have a project engineer from Boiler Exhaust, I have people from Haas Automation, I have every day, every week, I get a call, somebody wants to mentor a robotics team, and it's just amazing. When you see the people working alongside the kids, it's amazing. What happens if your team wins this level? What is the next stage? The competition, what we're trying to do today, all these teams are, they're trying to advance to world championships in St. Louis at the end of April. The, the three ro winning robots today will go all the way to St. Louis for the world championships. Is there anything about robotics or the competition that I might have missed that you want to add? I had teamed up with Disney. Disney wants to get involved with robotics somehow. And so Disney said, let's do something they've never, ever given us the name of the, or any hint this much. We kind of knew more this year because of the Stronghold name. Yeah. But Disney did a whole animation and the whole thing about it. It was really very cool this year. and so. We decided at our regional to all dress in periodic costumes, obviously, because it is Stronghold and it is storming the castle. And it's all about medieval times. So we, and the president of, I wish you had been here a little earlier, the president of um, FIRST was here today from New Hampshire, and he was very thrilled that we embraced it and all of us are dressed up to put this on for the kids. <laughs> it's really good. But you know, and another aside I would, I'd like to add, there's a team in here, and they have a lot of kids that are on the autism uh, Asperger's spectrum and kids with physical or mental disabilities, and they're a little charter school. And the woman came up to me. I was really frustrated yesterday. Just, things were, if something could go wrong, it would, right? Yeah. And she came up to me. She says, I want to tell you, we've changed our school since we were here last year. We added the STEM. We're doing this. We're doing that. And all this is going on. We're really excited. And she said, all because of you, all because you let our kids come last year, and all. Be I'm like, whoa, that's what it's all about. So, yeah. The teams are feeding off the vibe of the playing field as they stumble upon the calm green of the matted fringed carpet, serving as a smoother alternative to grass on the competition floor. At the end of a particularly heated match, a loud buzz sounds, and then an announcement over the intercom. Throughout the day, the field is very dynamic. There's over 10,000 different combinations that the field could be configured as um, with the various different pieces. Build, because I'm part of the PR team, so with Build being very stressed out and you don't want to interfere with them and we're all within the same room, it can be really tense at times, but it's just a great experience and it's super fun. When you rotate your phone up and this way and the screen rotates, that's a robotic action. There's sensors inside your phone that, that cause all that to happen. Um, just like the, our robots on the field use sensors to tell where they are, what their angles are. Um, we use vision tracking to um, track the targets where we're shooting the balls into. So they're... We'll schedule events. If it's outreach within our community, we do a, um, a summer science camp at our local Birds and Girls Club every summer. So we do a week of experiment, experiments. So that goes from looking up different science experiments that are going to interest kids to just being Co like listening around what's around school and like if there's an event that we can go and demo the robot and it's not you know moving a robotic arm or something like that was the traditional robotics but now almost everything is robotics who's going to build the buildings that's what everybody's going to be running on they're going to be building the robots that are going to take over the world so i'm um, i help run pr which is our public relations team so that goes from just making posters and being able to get our team out in the community 
We really start after last season. We just start preparing on how we're gonna be able to get new members, have them join, what's gonna interest them, what's gonna make them stick around, and just kind of start planning everything from last season to what's gonna help within this season. What next is championships, the world championships in St. Louis, Missouri, which is much larger than this. Well, our robot's capable of going over all the defenses and we do that with our shooter, which, which is able to manipulate the defenses. And we have a six wheel West Coast drive. At our last competition, our shooter actually broke. Yes, it's, our, it's part of our team image. We have our bowling shirts and our hair and our colors are red and black. So everything we do goes with red and black. One of our team members like way in the beginning, he had a mohawk and then everyone was like, oh, why don't we just do it too? So it's kind of just become a thing. Honestly, it keeps me busy. I mean, I live three hours away from my school, and um, I honestly have, I just, I just felt like I wasn't gonna find something that would really catch my attention. A projector flashes blue or red victory, and the audience erupts into cheer. Competitors falling back in relief as parents congratulate their daughters and sons. The floor is buzzing with laughter and high fives as teams make their way into the pit for adjustments. Now back to the studio for an interview with Bang Peng, competing in a team all the way from China. Oh, we are here on the first robotics competition. I'm from the team 5839. I'm on the outreach team and we are competing today. How did you get involved with robotics? We're from China and our school has robotics clubs. Before we knew about FIRST, we were doing Legos and make our own robots. And after that, one of our team members heard about FIRST competitions and they, th they thought that was a really cool thing to do. And we asked several groups of students interested in robotics and form our own team. What was the experience of building a robot from scratch? It was really hard because there are thousands of ways to reach the same goal and we have just to prototype and like trial and error for hundreds of times before we could find the best, if not like best out of the best yeah. models of our robots. It is hard. The brainstorming is really, really interesting. Why is this robotics program important to you personally? Because it's not only robots. It's a lot more than robots. It is a community which we find ourselves like have a really strong sense of belonging. We all love our team members and we have really strong friendship with each other. Apart from that, it's not only robots, it's business, it's design, it's outreach, it's also paying back to the community. Our robot, our robot club holds free lectures to all the high school students and it's really fun during that process. What impact has robotics had on your academic life? First of all, major. Yeah. I'm a senior and I'm thinking about what major I should take when I go into college. Before, I was a really, really like strict liberal arts student mm -hmm. and I got involved in robots like uh, two or three years ago. Now I was thinking either double major or just go straight to engineering because it was so fun. Yeah. What skills have you developed by competing in this program? Uh, first of all, communication skills. We have to constantly ask for money because it, it costs a lot to travel all the way from China here to the United States. And also computer programming, also CAD. I also help out in the computer aided design team. So I learned like SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametrics. Those are really cool skills. Yeah. Being from China, what are similarities and differences between your team and American teams? The biggest difference, I have to say, is the atmosphere. In China, we don't have that a strong STEM or robotics environment, which means it's hard to get a lot of robotics elements. For example, we were always hoping to get the eight inch wheels, but I couldn't buy them in China. And when we have those wheels shipped all the way from the States, it's already halfway into the building week, which means it's too late for us to incorporate the wheels. So I have to give up the eight inch wheels wow. and go for the six inch ones, which are a bit compromised to our robot's ability. So the biggest difference is we get a lot more help and resources in the United States because we have a lot more sponsors and a larger variety of robotics elements. Similarity is we all love robotics. We're equally passionate about robots and um, our members on our team 
could talk very actively about robotics with everyone in the pit area. What role do you play on your specific team? Cool. Uh, I am uh, mainly on the outreach team, which means I talk to sponsors, get, get the funding, get our budget covered. And also in the outreach, we pay back to the community. I talk to high school robotics club leaders, asking them whether they have students who want to learn about robotics or CAD, computer-aided design, and hold, organize those kind of free lectures. Basically, that's what I do. And wherever, uh, wherever I'm needed, I could go, like the CAT team, building team, wherever. What does your robot have to do? What's the course like? You mean the theme of this yeah. season? This season is basically conquering the opponent's castle. We have to pass defenses. There are five defenses in general, and we have to shoot boulders or, or balls into the opponent's tower in order to weaken the tower's defense. What happens if your team wins this level? What's the next stage? Uh, if we got if we, got, if we did really well in this competition, we could get qualification for the World Championships, which is next month in St. Louis, and we hope we could make it that way. What is it like being on the actual floor? It's a lot more exciting, I have to say, when people are cheering all over and yeah. yelling Red Alliance or Blue Alliance. You feel a lot more energy, and you think you are under a lot more pressure than when we are practicing with ourselves. And also there are a lot more unexpected accidents, like you got disconnected, you just, your robot just tipped over when you are running through a defense. There are a lot more accidents than in the practice. And it's always interesting and also stressing to deal with them. Why is it so important for youth, especially, to get involved with robotics? For myself, I have to say it's a brand new world because before I get involved into robotics, I don't know there's something as interesting as this. I, I don't talk to my friends about robotics or 3D printing or even like singularity, like robotics, a lot of things during our daily conversation. And after I know a lot more about this, I think it's a new field which is, as, which is equally interesting as like liberal arts or history, things like that. How long did it take to prepare for today's competition? The building time given by the organizing committee is six weeks, but before that we have like an all year preparing time. We have to take lessons on uh, computer aided design, on programming. I think it's an all year round thing. What is your favorite part about robotics? The game. <laughs> It's, uh, it's not only a competition, but a celebration that we finally know the robots because we didn't see the robots for a couple of months. After we shipped the robots to the organizing committee for inspection, we didn't get to see it. And we only get to see it at, at the competition, at the scene. And when you just uncover your robot, you have an like, immense feeling of pride and like, excitement. I love that the most. The weather is the, the weather is just perfect. It's very warm. I love the sun and uh, everyone is so cool here. I, we are planning to go to the beach and we are really excited about that. A mere four numbers represent a team full of driven, passionate young adults. Each of them are embodied with determination and intelligence, a tried and true formula for greatness. Armed with few nuts and bolts, wrenches and safety goggles, these high schoolers are paving the way to a future where technology and robotics lead in industry, medicine, science, math, and beyond. That was a gear turning experience with traces of silicone chips. It's good to see students follow their passion and learn about robotics. We hope to see you next time at ECTV. Um, since I saw Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you know what?